What would you do if someone tried to kill the only family member you have ever known? The only person who truly understands how it feels to be an alien on a strange new planet. After a recent kryptonite meteor shower, Batman equipped his diving suit and attempted to gather as many rocks as he could from the bottom of the sea. Superman was under quarantine because Batman was afraid of the effects these different kinds of rocks could have on him. As he went deeper, he found what looked like a Kryptonian ship in almost perfect condition, but the door was opened and somebody had crawled out. Back at his ship, a young girl climbed out of the water and flew away in the Batwing, but Batman managed to tag along for the ride. After crashing into the harbor, Batman was furious and wanted to hurt the person responsible for this. The girl was completely naked and started walking towards a group of men, but because she didn't know how strong she was, she accidentally injured two of them. The blonde girl with blue eyes had never seen a city like Gotham and was desperately trying to move through the streets while drawing a lot of attention from everyone, including the police. When Batman eventually found her, she was scared and crying and was only speaking Kryptonian. Batman used a piece of green kryptonite to knock her out and take her back to the Batcave. She eventually woke up very pissed and wanted to fly away, but Superman was there and communicated with her in Kryptonian. She was very happy that someone could understand her and said her name was Kara Zor-El, and she was Superman's cousin. One month later, Superman took her spaceship to the Fortress of Solitude, and he and Batman were investigating everything about it. Clark accidentally turned on an artificial sunlight inside the ship, which explained how Kara's powers manifested themselves so quickly. But everything seemed too good to be true, and Batman didn't trust Kara at all. He was very cautious, and wanted to take things slow. Let me in! It's after me! It hates me! Kara screamed out loud while she broke inside the laboratory, running from something. Her cousin asked what was wrong, why was she running, and she pointed at that. Crypto, Superman's dog, and the guardian of the fortress, wasn't her best friend just yet. Clark told Crypto he was a bad dog, and Batman asked Kara to calm down and go to her room. He asked Superman why he isn't bothered by the fact that the dog hates her, but Crypto hates everybody. Later in the day, Kara was exploring the fortress, completely unbothered by the collection of weapons and incredible animals collected there. Bruce met her and wanted to talk about her past, but Kara said he would never understand how it feels to see your own parents die right in front of you. Her parents built the ship and programmed it to follow Kal-El's trajectory to Earth, but her ship never took off and instead remained trapped in the rocks when the planet exploded. The meteors were slowly flying towards Earth for tens of years, and eventually, she crashed into the sea where Batman found her. Clark interrupted their conversation and said she's been through enough, and he thinks she is ready to leave this place. The story now jumps to the planet Apocalypse, where Granny Goodness organized a special fight to the death between the Furies and a female warrior who wanted to be their leader. Sadly, this warrior failed the test and was killed by the Furies. After Big Barda left the Furies, Apocalypse wanted a new leader for his personal guard and asked Granny to bring her the female Kryptonian who recently crashed on Earth. Back in Metropolis, after spending the night shopping, Kara told Clark that she likes this city a lot more compared to Gotham and asked if hot dogs are really made from dogs. They spent the night walking through the park until they found a statue dedicated to Superman. She finally understood how Clark was able to blend with the rest of the people. Nobody was looking for a dorky man wearing glasses. But the night was about to take a turn for the worse when Superman felt something. Out of nowhere, Clark was hit by a mysterious force and was thrown into the bushes. Kara tried to fly away but someone tied her leg up and prevented her from escaping. Clark changed into his Superman suit and returned more furious than ever, but he was met with a wave of attacks by the Harbinger. On the other side of the park, Batman was having problems of his own when someone tried to shoot him with an arrow, but he reacted fast and used one of his batarangs to destroy the bow. Artemis is one of the fiercest Amazon warriors, and for whatever reason, she attacked Batman. She got the best of him in combat, but Bruce used a special gas to put her to sleep. Meanwhile, Superman was fighting Harbinger, and vowed to protect Kara at all costs, and managed to incapacitate Lila. That's when Wonder Woman appeared and grabbed Kara using her lasso of truth. Superman considered Wonder Woman to be his friend, and was shocked to see that she was behind the attack. Wonder Woman said she was taking the girl with her and asked Superman to stay out of this. The story then moved to Themyscira, where Diana asked Artemis to train Kara in sword fighting, while Clark and Bruce watched from the sidelines. The fight got pretty intense, and eventually Kara lost her balance and fell on the ground, while Artemis prepared to strike with the sword. But Superman reacted instantly and rushed to grab her by the throat and save his cousin. Wonder Woman asked Superman if he lost his mind, saying that the sword would have shattered on impact, leaving Kara unharmed. But Clark wasn't happy he had to bring his cousin to Paradise Island, saying that his cousin was sent to Earth specifically for him to take care of her, and it's his responsibility. Diana stated that having powers and knowing how to use them aren't the same thing. She wants to teach Kara how to use her powers and fight at the same time, 
Kara intervened and asked if her opinion matters and if anyone even cares what she wants to do. But the adults were talking and told her to go explore the island with her new friends until dinner. Batman asked Clark if he really would have broken Artemis's neck to defend his cousin. He feels that ever since Kara came into their lives, Superman let his guard down, trusting her with his secrets when every instinct should be telling him to take things slow and be careful. Meanwhile, on the other side of the island, Lila told Kara that she can trust Wonder Woman and that she only wants what's best for her. But just a bit later, Lila has a vision of something horrific that was about to happen. Out of nowhere, a giant boom tube opened and an army of doomsday creatures emerged. The Amazon warriors regrouped and attacked the beast with Superman and Batman by their sides. Last time Superman fought Doomsday he was killed in battle, but this time something is different. These creatures are not the same, even though they are strong and vicious. There's no blood when someone injures them. Batman said the beasts are not alive, and he used explosive batarangs to kill a bunch of them. These creatures are called Animate, and were created by Darkseid scientist Dr. Bedlam, who used Doomsday DNA as a template to create them. However, they are flawed and a lot weaker compared to the original Doomsday. One of them attacked Artemis, but Superman jumped to help her and killed it with one hit. Clark apologized about what happened before during the training and told Diana to pull her army back. He wanted to end the fight alone. He got up into the air and powered up his heat vision to unimaginable levels and then released a blast so powerful that it destroyed the entire Doomsday army with one hit. The attack took everything out of Superman, and he admitted he didn't think he could do that again anytime soon. Sadly, this attack was nothing more than a diversion. On the other side of the island, another boom tube opened, and Darkseid's personal guard, the Furies, came in and abducted Kara, taking her back to Apocalypse. Clark was furious and claimed he is going to Apocalypse to take Kara back from the Master of Darkness himself. But before they travel to the Hell Planet, they need someone to help them. Big Barda was previously part of the female Furies, but she deserted and now lived a peaceful life on Earth. She still had a mother box, which is the only way to open a boom tube to Apocalypse, and Barda offered to give it to them, but only if she came along. Superman was reluctant to take her with them, even though Barda knew Apocalypse better than anyone, but he was given no choice. Together they opened the boom tube and passed through it, arriving on the other side, a place that not only looks like hell, but also smells like death. Apocalypse is a blazing inferno of misery, a planet that exists in another universe, and the only way for them to find Kara was to split up. Wonder Woman and Big Barda went together towards Darkseid's citadel, but were confronted by the female Furies, a group of highly skilled female warriors that were part of Darkseid's personal guard. Diana claimed they were very good, but Big Barda already knew this because she trained them. She used to be their leader. However, she had no issues injuring them during the battle. The Furies were not only skilled warriors but also cunning, and while Wonder Woman bested one of them, the others took Barda hostage and vowed to kill her if Diana didn't surrender. Meanwhile, Batman separated from the rest and was moving through the planet on his own, when two guards and their hellhounds caught his scent. But Batman moved fast and used one of his explosives to destroy a structure and collapse it on the two guards that were following him. He continued and eventually found the armory on Apocalypse, a place that housed over 500 hellspores, devastating powerful bombs that were capable of destroying the entire planet. Meanwhile, Superman slowly advanced towards Darkseid's palace, destroying all of his defense systems without breaking a sweat. He reached the throne room's giant doors, extremely furious and determined to take Kara back on Earth with him. The Master of Darkness himself stood confidently on the throne, remarking that Kara was free to leave if she wanted to. Clark didn't know what Darkseid did to her, but the nightmare was over. She was safe now. He tells Darkseid that after he takes Kara home, both of them have unfinished business. But something was wrong. Kara attacked Clark, punching him in the face, claiming he never listens to anyone other than his own voice. Superman refused to defend himself and fight his cousin. He would rather accept the beating. Darkseid brainwashed Kara, and now that Clark was on the ground, he asked her to kill him. While this was going on, Wonder Woman was still deciding what to do next. While the Furies threatened to kill Big Barda, she used her lasso of truth to grab Granny Goodness by the neck and promised to snap it if the Furies don't back down. Back in the throne room, Supergirl was kicking Superman's ass, tossing him out the window and into the fire pits of Apocalypse. Superman told her cousin that Darkseid took control of her mind and that this wasn't really her, but Kara claimed he didn't really know anything about her. The fight continued in the scorching fires of the planet with Clark refusing to even defend himself, allowing Kara to go all out. But he knew that if things kept going the way they did, Kara will eventually kill him. Superman remembered what Batman told him before coming to Apocalypse, to always be prepared. He had something hidden inside his utility belt, liquid kryptonite which he used to cover his hand with. While the green rock visibly weakened him, Superman used it to his advantage and attacked Supergirl with one powerful punch, knocking her out instantly. Meanwhile, in the throne room, Batman showed up and told Darkseid it's over. He will let the girl go immediately if he wants to still have a kingdom to rule. 
Darkseid didn't believe the two Kryptonians would destroy the entire planet, but Batman wasn't talking about them. He was talking about the Hellspores bombs he found in the armory. Even though the bombs were encrypted, he was able to reprogram them using a mother box and told Darkseid that if he doesn't let Supergirl go, he will destroy the entire planet. You dare? He was furious at Batman for threatening him with the destruction of his planet. Apocalypse. Let's go home. Superman's final remark before going back to Earth. Back on Paradise Island, Kara finally woke up, and she was herself again. Everything felt like a nightmare, and she apologized for everything that happened, even though it was never her fault. Before leaving the island, Kara said goodbye to Wonder Woman, and told Batman that she finally remembers her mother's name, Allura. After that, she and Clark both left the island and went back to the Fortress of Solitude, where Clark gave Kara her first Supergirl suit. He then asked her to follow him because he wants her to meet some people. Supergirl said she likes the costume. Clark's mother made it especially for her. Clark welcomed Kara to Smallville, the place where he grew up, and showed her the farm. His parents were both missing, and there was no sign of the car. Clark thinks they must be in the city, but when he tries to open the door, a powerful punch sends him flying tens of feet into the tractor. I gave my word I wouldn't come for the girl. Your death, however, is something that is long overdue, Superman. Darkseid shot his Omega Beams directly at the Man of Steel, but Supergirl jumped in front, taking the full force of the blast. Sadly, she wasn't strong enough, and this completely destroyed her, turning her body into nothing more than ashes. That's not what Darkseid wanted, but he felt content knowing that Superman will have to live with the suffering of losing his cousin. He told Superman it will be difficult for him to learn that once again, he is the last Kryptonian alone in the universe, but he has nobody to blame but himself. Everything that happened completely infuriated Superman, who told Darkseid to shut the hell up while he punched him with all of his strength. He was angry that Kara's life meant nothing for him, her age, her blonde hair, blue eyes and beautiful smile meant nothing for Darkseid. The only thing he cared about was her tremendous power. Power that was virtually untapped, and he wanted to control. He tried to kill Superman the same way he did her cousin, but Wonder Woman showed up and defended against the blast. But Clark didn't need her help. He wanted revenge, and he felt like it was his responsibility alone. For the first time in a long time, Superman finally went all out, hitting Darkseid without any restraint. Their fight reached even the sun, and the Master of Darkness tried to defend himself, but he was powerless against Superman's rage. He punched Darkseid so hard it actually broke his hand, but Clark was not finished just yet. He opened a boom tube and took Darkseid to the far reaches of the universe, until they reached the Source Wall. For years you've tried to learn the secrets of the ultimate power from the other side, but you will never get the answers, just like the others who are entombed here. Superman pushed Darkseid inside the source wall, saying that this is where he belongs, along with all the other failures in the universe. He then returned home to his farm in Kansas, where the Justice League were gathered to help rebuild the farm. Batman managed to gather Kara's ashes from the ground and put them inside a glass container, then gave it to Clark. Later that night, Superman goes back to Paradise Island and enters a secret room while talking in Kryptonian. He finds Supergirl lying on the bed. Kara was still alive, and Clark told her how proud he was of her courage to jump in front of the Omega Beams. Like Wonder Woman promised, Diana watched over Kara using the Justice League satellite system. When Supergirl rushed in front of Darkseid's Omega Beams, Diana teleported her out and teleported her ashes back in. Superman knew that Darkseid would come back after Supergirl, and tricked him by setting up her death with Wonder Woman's help. Now that Darkseid was no longer a threat, Kara was free to choose the life she wanted for herself, and she wanted nothing more than to become Supergirl. Her cousin finally introduced her to the other superheroes. Welcome to this universe, Kara Zor-El. 